Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the Bell Racestar DLX Flex Helmet. Bell are without a doubt one of the first names in modern motorcycle helmets. They pioneered the use of expanded polystyrene as a protective crush liner way back in the 1950s. This helmet is their latest top line race helmet and it shows that the company are still pioneers in the current day. The Race Star Flex DLX made big news when it was first revealed back in 2014 because it introduced a new method of providing impact absorption. This helmet doesn't rely entirely on expanded polystyrene or EPS in the liner. There's still a section of that, but it's one of three layers in this helmet. There's also a layer of expanded polyolefin or EPO and one made from expanded polypropylene, which is also known as EPP. The idea is that the three layers work together to help protect against a wider range of impact speeds than EPS alone can provide. The EPO is most effective at absorbing low speed impacts EPP works best on medium speed knocks, and then EPS is there for the harder hits. If you have quite a low speed impact, the EPO alone will deform to absorb it. Hit it harder and the EPO and EPP will both work to protect you, and if you hit your head hard enough, the EPS will compress too, and all three layers will work to absorb the impact energy. That flex liner is also able to move around slightly within the helmet shell, which Bell say helps it protect against injuries from glancing blows. Because it can deflect slightly inside the shell, energy is spent on that movement, stopping that energy being transferred to your brain. So that's the truly novel part of the Raystar DLX Flex, but now let's cover the rest of it. The shell is made from all carbon fiber and it has an aerodynamic spoiler around the back. Carbon fiber is usually associated with the very lightest of lids, but this helmet weighs in on our scales at 1,492 grams, which I would say is a little bit above the average for a race helmet, but it's still reasonable as helmet weight goes in general. There's a lot of helmet in the Race Star DLX. It's physically bigger than many other helmets, and I'd say that contributes to a little bit of the extra weight. There's a comprehensive ventilation system running through this helmet's shell and its liner. The chin vent here pulls air in, and scoops it through the top of the chin bar and then two vents above the visor cool the top of the head. This one only just clears the top of the visor and this small central tab opens four intake holes. The second shutter here opens to reveal a hole that allows air to flow down into the helmet through the lid and then out through this exit here. The venting on this helmet was effective in my time with the lid, especially the chin vent and the one above the visor. These are the two that sit farthest forward on the helmet, so it's no surprise that they get the most airflow. I found with the lower of the two top vents that it was tricky to lift the opening tab if I didn't have the visor locked down completely. Speaking of which, the visor on this lid is definitely one of its strong points. It offers great clarity, breadth of vision, and is very easy to change. It has a central lifting tab, which is rapidly becoming the position of choice for visor tabs, and it locks in place by giving it a good solid click down. If you don't click it down, it leaves a small gap to allow in some air around the base of the visor, but push it up any further and it has to open all the way. That lack of a half stage opening is something some owners have raised as a bit of an issue for them. Locking the visor down is what gives you that bit more clearance above to get a gloved hand under and operate this top vent. Without doing that, as I said, there isn't much room to operate that tab. The visor is protected against mist by a Pinlock 120 insert. That's the middle of Pinlock's three grades of insert in terms of moisture protection, and it's supplied in the box with the helmet. This helmet came with a clear visor as standard, and previously the Raystar DLX came with an additional tinted visor in the box. In future, the helmet will be supplied with Bell's Pro Tint visor, which darkens in sunlight and returns to clear as the light fades. That will be a significant upgrade as there's far less hassle of swapping visors for different conditions, even though it's actually pretty simple to swap between the two. The interior for this helmet is fully removable for washing and the cheek pads are dead easy to fit as they're attached with magnetic clips. There are recesses for intercom speakers too. They're filled with wedges of foam as standard, so pulling those out makes room for the speakers. Bell have also left thinner sections in the top of the cheek pads to allow spectacle arms to fit in there comfortably. The strap fastener is a racy D-ring setup and the covers that protect your skin from irritation just here can be removed for washing too. 
There's one feature here that Bell are among the few manufacturers to use, and that's the, the tab that holds the loose strap end out of the way here, secures against the base of the D-ring with a magnet. And that's way quicker to use than the usual press stud you get on most helmets. Approvals for the lid are ECE 2205 for road use, ACU Gold for the track here in Britain, and as maximum five-star performance in the UK government's Sharp Safety Scheme. We've had around 20 owner reviews for this lid so far, and on the whole, riders are very pleased with their purchase. Some say they've had to go up a size from their normal choice, which I suspect is down to the interior shape of the lid. Those riders who say they have what's called an intermediate oval head shape are the people who find this lid the most comfortable. That's the shape of someone's head when it's slightly longer front to back than it is wider from side to side. My head is closest to what's called a round head shape where you've got an equal distance front to back and side to side. And I found the Race Star DLX Flex slightly too short and also too narrow to be completely comfortable for me. That was in the size medium I would normally take and I feel some people are going up a size if their head is a bit too long or a bit too wide to be comfortable for the internal shape of this helmet. Finally, there's one last detail that might appeal to some riders about this helmet. It's supplied with a classy helmet holder. So if you're transporting this lid, it's much easier to carry it around in this with the handles that sit on the top than it is to carry it around in the normal drawstring bag that you get with most helmets. I hope that tells you everything there is to know about the Bell Race Star DLX Flex Helmet. But if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.